Hello Beaks, I'm Alan Woods from Woods Beco, and today I'm going to show you how to identify chalk brood and how to deal with it. Go. About a week ago, I came out here and I was just looking at the front of this hive, but I noticed that there wasn't a lot of activity happening uh, in the front of this hive. So I went inside the hive and I ended up finding, as you can see right here on the front, little mummies, right? Which tells me that this hive has chalk brood, right? And chalk brood is caused by a fungus that affects the three to four day old worker and larva drones. This fungus normally occurs in early spring when the conditions are damp, but as you can see, it's in July and I have it now, so uh, I need to deal with this. So this fungus happens because the larva actually feeds on these spores, right? And they become infected. Once they become infected, uh, they're covered with a cotton-like mycelium, which is a fungus, which will eventually fill the entire cell. Um, pull this out real quick. And once it fills the entire cell, eventually it's gonna it's gonna harden, and it's gonna turn into kind of a what we call a mummy state. And uh, that's what you can see right here. It's a little mummy states, and normally they're black, white, and gray. And all this is is the mycelium, which infected the 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 larva, and now the bees are starting to clean them out. Right, they're starting to clean them out. Child brood is generally not considered uh, a serious threat to the colony and normally it recovers on its own. However, because it's June and this has been going on so long and I haven't really noticed it, uh, I'm going to take a few steps July. to uh, actually July. I'm going to take a few steps to actually uh, help this colony out. Right? And while there is actually no known cure for uh, chalk brood, uh, there are some steps that we can take, right? Uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your hive is well ventilated, okay? And um, once you can do that, and I normally do about putting nickels under the back end of the hive, keeping the top up, keep it ventilated. Uh, and the second thing that you can do is to, you have to make sure that this hive has plenty of brood uh, plenty of uh, young bees, nurse bees, to keep the brood dry and warm. So what I did last week, I put a frame of uh, actual nurse bees from another hive in here, and uh, it's actually starting to look pretty good. Not only is it looking pretty good, but you can see that they have started cleaning out the frames on this side that um, actually had the infection in it so I'm gonna eventually take this one out um, but I left it in there for two reasons one is because I wasn't sure if um, the infection had spread through the entire hive or two if the queen was the actual problem so it turned out that the queen was the actual problem so again last week I requeen, put a new queen in here, and as you can see, the bees are really starting to, the number is starting to build up, and the bees are really starting to, they're starting to look good again. And I'm actually starting to see, there's eggs, lots of eggs in here from that new queen. There's eggs on both sides. Again, this was a small hive. Now this frame right here, I can see that the bees are cleaning it out. So eventually what I am gonna do, once I ensure that this hive is strong and I'm willing to waste resources on it, I'm gonna shake all of these bees to get rid of some of these frames as they, they work on the the newer frame and then I'm gonna let this hive go and see what happens 
Ah, there's the new queen and you can see all the brew. So this hive is really, it's starting to pick up slowly, but uh, it's a work in process. So the last step you can take is by feeding it thermal, right? Which is in, um, you put it in sugar water and you put it in here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna close this hive back up. I'm gonna go in real quick. I'm gonna make some sugar, sugar syrup. Ah, it's gonna really help these bees out. So come on, it's gonna make some sugar syrup. Okay, beets. When making sugar water, there's one thing that I really want to show you. That's this. Whenever I make sugar water, I always use hot tap water. I never boil my water. I never get it above temperature and let it come back down. I just use hot tap water. Um, and it dissolves the sugar just fine. So in this case, I have a two quart container. So I'm gonna put six of these in here. Right, go ahead. Okay, Beach, as I told you, I put in this uh, container, six two quart containers of water, which equals three gallons. We know that one gallon of water weighs eight pounds and on a one-to-one -one ratio is pound to pound. That means we'll have to put 24 pounds of sugar into this uh, five gallon bucket with three gallons of water. But I'm just going to go ahead and use all five. You can put more sugar, uh, you just can't add more water. Now here's the beauty of this whole thing. When you put all of this sugar in three gallons of water, the container is full, so it's five gallons of sugar syrup. Right? So what I'm gonna do at this time, I'm gonna put uh, thermal, which it comes in the honey the pro health from Man Lake. And normally they tell you to put um, three tablespoons per gallon. So I already measured out. 15 tablespoons. Now remember, thymol is good for uh, tracheal mites and uh, any other type of digestive problem that the bees have. However, you have to be cautious because too much thymol is uh, actually deadly for the bees. So, uh -oh. I have my handy dandy uh, mixer here and I'm just going to slowly st uh, I was going to slowly start I'm going to slowly start and mix it this water is warm so it's going to mix fairly easy actually this water is pretty hot still You might want to mix this where you don't want bees uh, because you're going to spill a little and you're going to have bees coming out of the woodwork <coughs> to get in there. But as you can see now, the water is actually, you can actually see the bottom of the bucket, so it's mixed fairly well just that fast using hot water, not boiling water, just hot tap water. this out. So the next thing we're going to do before we go up to the bees, I'm going to um, open up this spray bottle and I'm going to put, pump some of the uh, thermal in here. This is a, we don't really have sugar water in here. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is, is because what I want to do is when I get into that hive, I want to actually spray the bees. I want to mist them with this to force them to consume this, this thermal, and that's going to help this hive immensely. All 
All right, let's go feed these bees. Let's start. Okay, I made it back up to the hive with the sugar syrup. Now let's feed. All right, when feeding uh, a, a colony like this, you don't want to just totally fill this with uh, sugar water. You want to put about maybe a quarter in there. But prior to doing that, you want to make sure that as they started uh, cleaning um, the frames in here, that you actually get rid of uh, these cones. So the way you do this is, I always just put it in a bucket and I take the bucket with me. I will not leave it here. And like I said, this is not like this is a highly contagious disease. Uh, normally, the, the, the colony can overcome this itself. But again, like I said, it's already July. And uh, they're just now getting over it, so I'm just trying to help them and uh, get them to build up. Okay. Like I said, you don't really want a lot of sugar water in here. You just want enough, about a quart. Because you don't have that many bees in here as it is. And you don't want them to drown nor do you want um, the thermal to attract robbers because this colony is really fragile now. They're really small and they're really fragile. So what I'm gonna do to help them out, I'm gonna go ahead and put this entrance reducer on. And yes, I'm gonna put it on the smallest hole So that they don't get raw. So I believe this colony is going to make it, uh, but it's uh, one of those things where you really got to catch this early because if you don't, it can get out of hand. Oh, another thing I forgot to show you. What I'm, what, what do I do with the spray bottle? So what I do with the spray bottle, I actually just drench the bees with this right? because I want them to I want to spread on them and then I want them to immediately start consuming the thermal so that it can uh, if there's anything going on with them it'll help them out and again like I said the colony is going to be weak it's acceptable to uh, trachea mites and other things and this is the, the fix for that well, bees, beaks, we're going to check in uh, on this hive in about maybe a week or two. I'm going to show you how it's doing. But until then... Okay, beaks, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, be blessed.